is the Miller Lite Cowboys Hour. Supported by Albertsons. And brought to you by Miller Lite, the only beer of the Cowboys. It's Miller time. Albertsons and Tom Thumb, the official supermarket and pharmacy of the Dallas Cowboys. Luke Casey, the official bootmaker of the Dallas Cowboys. Blockchain.com. Make your crypto play today. Buffalo Wild Wings. And by Omni. Omni Hotels and Resorts, the official hotel of the Dallas Cowboys. Now, your hosts, Nicole Hutchison and Brad Shad. And welcome, everyone, to the Cowboys Hour. It's Monday night. It is... Uh, I know yesterday was dispiriting, but even the Victory Monday Club has not brought a Victory Monday sign. So it's an anticipating the next Victory Monday Cowboys Hour. We are at Sidecar Social at the Star District in Frisco. We thank you so very much for being out here with us tonight. And just P.S., if you're within the sound of our voice, which if you're not, what's the point? <laughs> but if you're within the sound of our voice... Uh, and and you have not come to see the Star District and brought your family during the Christmas season and see how they dress it up and what they do, you're missing a bet. I, I can't recommend it strongly enough. So we thank everybody who is here with us tonight at Sidecar Social, everybody listening on the Dallas Cowboys Radio Network, and everybody watching whenever and wherever you're watching on uh, streaming on DallasCowboys.com. And um, our guest tonight is so one of my favorites that I just don't even try to be objective about him <laughs> anymore. After doing this job for a long time, I've just never seen a guy who I admire more as a player or talk to a guy who I, I thought had more to offer than C.J. Goodwin, and we're so grateful to have you with us tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. There you go. Beautiful. And it's not easy. We know it's not easy after a game. And C.J., of course, has been on injured reserve for a few weeks. But it's not easy after a game uh, like yesterday for any player or coach to do anything but uh, soak in a uh, tub with uh, a wireless iPad nearby that they can shut off and not look at. You want to you flush that. Um, and so maybe we, maybe we start there. You've been in a, a lot of games in a terrific career. Um, what's the, in fact, Mike McCarthy was asked today, I think it was the first question he was asked, uh, do you burn the tape after a game like that or do you delve in? And he said, no, I don't burn the tape. I think we need to watch it and correct it. What's, what's your opinion? That was old-fashioned. Butt whooping, wasn't it? I'm sorry. Yeah. Well, it was. Old-fashioned, no. yeah. It was, it was nasty. <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah, we definitely watch the tape. Um, we, you know, you want to learn. A loss is never just a loss. It's always a lesson. So we learned. Um, what we did wrong, um, they, I mean, really what it was, they were just more hungry than us. It, it meant more to them than it did to mm -hmm. us. So, you know, um, if we just got that hunger back. It, it's not going to it's not gonna affect anything moving forward. You guys have shown that you can bounce back from losses like this. You guys showed it this season. Uh, does it make you all feel a little better heading into maybe a game like Miami, knowing that, you know, you all had struggled with the loss and you all can, you know, bounce back? Being in the locker room, yeah. we're, we're fine. Yeah. We're, we're not. You know, going to dwell on this too much. It's it's a loss. Like I said, it was old-fashioned about whipping. We'll be all right. Uh, why? Why why is not why is this game not one that leaves a mark? I thought the San Francisco game left a mark for a little bit. It did. It did. That definitely did. Because we know we'll have to see them again. Um, uh, the Bills, we, you know, hopefully we get to see them again at the, at the end of the season, of course. But um, like I said, it was a must win for them. And I think before the game, once we got that news about us being a lock for the so playoffs. So you, you knew that. You heard it. It, was, you, it was on everybody's phone. Okay. We, and you, you know, it was murmurs around the locker room. Okay. I'm not going to blame that for what happened. Yeah. But, but you did know. You were already we in the playoffs. Already, we yeah. already knew, and, they, and we knew that they were hungry, too. That's just me yeah. being outside looking in, being in the locker room. So uh, you kind of felt it when it's 14 um, nothing. Right, you, guys, you guys were watching them, of course. I was there. Yeah, I mean, we, you know, I'm broadcasting the game yeah, trying to figure yeah. out something good to say. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. I was trying to give the boys a little pep talk or whatever. It was just like, uh, yeah, it got ugly. So, and we're not going to dwell on this game. That's our policy. When, when, <laughs> when a game is lost, then we look for other, especially at the Christmas season, and we really want to tell the C.J. Goodwin story tonight. But this, I think there's, there's some interesting things about this one. And, and one is, and, and both 
Coach McCarthy and Dan Quinn talked at some length today about the tackling, which was really uncharacteristic. Mm -hmm. And I've seen a few clips. I haven't watched the whole tape, but there, there's some guys getting shoved around who, yes. who don't get shoved around. Yes. Yes. So, and here's a question that I asked Dan, and I'll ask you. I know a lot of basketball coaches who say uh, rebounding and defense, it's not about talent. It's about what's in your heart and how hard do you want to work? How bad do you want it? And so my question is, is tackling like that? Because uh, you didn't, guys didn't forget their technique. The, uh, you had twice as many missed tackles in the game yesterday as in any other game. So you don't lose your technique in, in a week. Uh, so how do you account for that? a team that has shown nothing but fight and resilience, all of a sudden it's not there? Mental. It was all, it was all mental. Uh, you go into a cold weather game, in a game where we felt like, like I said, we got the news early, and they like they were honestly more hungry than us. So we got up there, and you know you don't lose your technique like you said. You kind of you, you kind of chill. You got to get comfortable, and uh, it shows on the tape when you're missing tackles. It's not because you, you don't want it. It's just because you, you're kind of complacent. Um, so was, is that easy to look at, get mad, and say that's the last time that's happening? Yeah, I mean we said it against the 49ers too. So we have to not just say it, we have to do it. Um, and that's something that I think that we, we can correct. Um, it's better to lose it now than, you know, in a few weeks when it, you know, you lose or go home. Being there on the sidelines and in the locker room afterwards, what was something that you told the guys after that game? If you're able to repeat it on air. <laughs> You can edit. You're, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to edit already. You're, but, you're a smart guy. You can edit. <laughs> no, um, same thing. Uh, you know, next game, you know, it's all cookie cutter stuff yeah. because we're all pros. Yeah. So it's really nothing you can really say. Mm -hmm. It's all about what we do, and okay. um, that's coming up uh, uh, Wednesday. So it's about Wednesday now. Uh, as Bill Belichick would say, we're on to Miami. Exactly. Right? Exactly. Okay. All right. Um, l let's talk a little bit about – that's enough about that game. Let's talk about <laughs> C.J. Goodwin. Um, first of all, when did you go on IR? Uh, 49ers. Uh, hurt in that game. I got hurt in the second quarter. Tore, tore a pec tore my muscle. left pec, yeah. And you tried to rehab through it. That didn't work. Have you had surgery? I had it um, a month ago. Okay. And so how are you? I feel good. I feel really good. Um, I, f I honestly feel like I'm a month out from, from getting back, but they leave it up to Britt. He's not going to let me back, so <laughs> we'll see. Yeah, but I feel good. How dispiriting was that for you? You're such a tremendous competitor, and, and I, I don't think there's any question that you're, you're a leader. The way, the way you conduct yourself and your, the things you know on the special teams, but throughout, throughout the team, especially the defense. How hard's this been for you to just have to watch it? Uh, it's very hard, um, just especially being 10 years in the league. Uh, you know, like people don't last this long, and, and for me to get hurt this late in my career, it's very disheartening. But there's always a silver lining in it. I get to watch the young guys play. I get to, you know, help coach the young guys. I know Bones has so much trust in me. Coach McCarthy has so much trust in me. Coach Al has so much trust in me that they let me really coach the guys as much as I can. And um, – just to see the guys like really like follow your, your mentorship is, is amazing. I didn't know I had that much, you know, say, <laughs> you know, um, but it's, it's, it's really cool, man. It's really cool. Uh, all right. So I would normally not go down this road, but you have, you, you have opened the door uh, because you're, you're 33 and you're 10 years into your career. Don't say 33 too loud though. You're, 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 you're in your late twenties. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Uh, and you are, and you're, you're a 10 year guy. Um, do you worry in this process that your playing career is over? No, I try not to. I still can play. I was playing at a high level before I got hurt. Yes, extremely. Um, so, I mean, it, it, everything's on tape. It's nothing that happened to my legs. You know, my legs are my, on my ticket. So, something, it's an injury that people come back and play even better at. So, I'm, I'm fine. I let my agent do his job. Okay, good. Yeah. Do your job, agent. Okay, <laughs> now, here's the other thing. You know, this was driven home to me in training camp watching Darian Thompson, who we saw here as a really competitive player, a, a decent safety, a, who, who really became a good special teams player and leader. Stop me if 
This it all sounds familiar. And, um, and, and he took to coaching and just watching him coach. There's a different side of DT than anybody ever saw. Man, he's going to be such a good – he's already an amazing coach right now, but he's going to be a great head coach one day. Um, just I mean, He's younger than me, and just, like, listening to him, like, I'm like, wow, he's, he's really a good coach. I call him coach now, even though, like, that's my, that's my friend. I just – he walked around, I call him coach all day. It we were funny. teammates, weren't you? We were teammates, yeah. He, we came in the same week to Dallas, um, and he's been one of my best friends uh, since then. But I call him – Call him coach, and it's never even a second thought anymore, man. It's, he's really, really a good coach. So are we talking to Coach Goodwin? <laughs> Not yet. Give me a couple more no, years. No, 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 yeah, no. Yeah. I don't mean yet. I know what you mean. I, I know mean what you yet. mean. Bones wants me to coach so bad. I don't. I CJ, don't, I'm just going to tell you, you seem like an absolute I natural to me. I appreciate that. I, I think I want to be more on the front office end. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get under Will's wing, man, Will McClay's wing. But, um, no, I, I, I like to – I would take coaching, but it's, they don't go home. So, <laughs> I want to see my kids. The, the, great, the great Drew Pearson uh, had his career ended somewhat prematurely by an automobile accident, oh, had a man. spleen injury, and so he had to quit playing. And Tom Landry said, why don't you come coach the receivers? And Drew did that for a year, and he said, they don't, they don't go home and they make no money. I'm not doing that. Yeah, it is. I don't know if they make no money anymore, but I know they don't go home. So I don't, I don't want to do that. I want to see my kids. That's all. What about the front office aspect of it interests you? The whole thing. I, was, I sat in a uh, meeting with them uh, over the offseason this year. Uh, Will was, was kind enough to invite me up to Shadow. And I just seen how they break down the college. Well, he's the, like the college guy, I guess. And um, I just seen how they break down the college film and I seen how they break down, like, the player and then the person. And, like, we were so good at, like, breaking down the person more than the player. I was like, man, you're really, like, you can see through all the, the numbers and see this guy as a person. And, I've, I mean, I worked it with kids growing up and, like, young, young men. And sometimes they get lost in the shuffle because they're not, like, um, you know, on paper great young men. But Will can see through all that, and you can help change somebody's life, which in turn changes a lot of people's lives. So I, I, I like that. I like that aspect. Is that something that you thought about during your time in college, or is this something that just kind of uh, came about maybe a couple weeks ago or soon this past year? I think the last probably two or three years okay. uh, I, I was aiming more towards the front office. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you could coach a couple of years first after you play a couple more years. Yeah, yeah. Give me a couple more years playing first. Yeah. Let me wear these legs out. And then, uh, yeah, I, I, would, I would coach. I, I think it's cool for like two, three years. See where it goes. And then front of it. Um, I, I want you to play some more because uh, you need to go to the Pro Bowl. You need to be a Pro Bowl uh, special teams guy. And to me, if you're on a good team, which you are, and special teams is emphasized, which it is, then, you know, after a while, guys notice. I'm, I'm pretty well known around the special teams world in the league. Um, I'm, I've been known for a while as one of the better special teams players in the league, but I play for the Cowboys. Yeah. So, <clears throat> I play for the Cowboys. It's hard to, you know, as specialist, a special teams player to make the Pro Bowl as a Cowboy. Why? Because we are the premier team in the league. So you don't want too many Cowboys in the, in the Pro Bowl. Think about it. We we had uh, Banger. He he has numbers. He has to go to the Pro Bowl. Uh, we have um, the kicker this year. He has numbers. He He's has sick. To go to, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Come on now. Absolutely. Yeah. Golden toe. And then you know if you don't if you don't jump out with the numbers, it's you know it's, mm. it's a numbers thing. Do you uh, do you know anything about Bill Bates? Yeah, I was back. I understand. Yeah, yeah. I were I were the team back then. Well, th th you got. Every every team in the league has two special teams coaches now. Yeah. And b back when Bill was playing, there were a lot of teams that just assigned aspects of the special teams to a position coach. Right. The receivers coach would coach right. the punt returners and like that. Yeah. Yeah. He was a, he was a great player. He was a great player. He was the first cowboy yeah. to make the Pro Bowl right. as a special teams player. I think we had what one. Yes, I think so. And, but, but and I think Steve Tasker. Mm -hmm. Someday needs to be in the Hall of Fame. He was a great special teams player yeah. for a Buffalo team that went to four straight right. Super Bowls. Right. That's what we. That's what we say about um, my man from the Patriots. He needs to be in a Hall Slater. Of Fame. Yeah, Slater. Hundred percent. Thirteen Pro Bowls. Come on now. Yeah. 
A hundred percent. But we're going. We're so why can't I? So why can I not get C.J. Goodwin in the Pro Bowl? It's not about that. I'm trying to get to the Super Bowl. I understand. Yeah. I understand. All right, that's a good place to take our first break. We are at Sidecar Social in the Star District in Frisco with the Cowboys special team star C.J. Goodwin and uh, Nicole. Who who else is? See, this is what's great about the computers. If it's a piece of paper, you don't yes. have to reboot it. Sorry, yes. guys. Our show is brought to you by Luke KZ, the official bootmaker of the Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders. We'll be right back. <laughs> To the Miller Lite Cowboys Hour, supported by Albertson. We are at Sidecar Social in the Star District in Frisco. Brad Sham with Nicole Hutchinson and our special guest, Cowboys special team star C.J. Goodwin. And you don't mind that description now, do you? That's cool. I mean, once upon a time, you were (laughs) cornerback, Uh C.J. Goodwin. Did there come a time, there must have been at, at, at some juncture, whether it was before you got here or after you got here, that you would hear yourself described as a special team star, and you might have wanted to say, oh, hold on just a minute now. There, there was before. Uh, Coach Bring that Bo- microphone. I'm sorry, yeah, yeah. before uh, Coach Bones got here. Okay. So as soon as he got here, he was like, I don't want you really playing defense anymore, so I'm going to need you over here, and this is where your focus is going to be, here and in the locker room. So I'll be the special team star you want. I'm fine with that. You play- oh, go, no, go ahead. You've played under a lot of uh, different – coordinators, special teams coordinators. What makes Bones so unique? Full of energy. And he's always positive. Mm. Always. Um, I don't think he sleeps. I'm not lying <laughs> to you. I'm not lying to you. He's always, he's, he'll never, like, get on you and be mm. like, you can't do this. Mm. If you can't do something, then he won't have you do that. So, so how does that help you as a player? 
Uh, just because, like, you want to play for this guy. Like, you want to you wanna win for yourself and you want to win for him. Yeah. Um, he, he's honestly, like, like, almost like a saint. I'm not lying oh, to wow. you. And I hope, I hope he's not watching this. <laughs> I'll never tell him that to his face. So this is an interesting thing to me. Um, I don't know if it was before 30-something years ago when the Cowboys were winning the three Super Bowls in five years. And uh, the late, great Joe Avizano was their special teams coach. And Joe, Joe was um, photogenic and animated and outspoken, and the camera kind of gravitated to him. And then th that became kind of a thing. Uh, and there are a lot of special teams coaches through the last couple of decades who um, are very into what they're doing, and you can tell by the way they react. So what is different about John Fossil? He just wants the best for you, man. Um, he, he's, I don't know if he's really animated like that, but he's, he's really. And, he, and in fact, he's not. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't, care about, he doesn't care about that stuff, man. He just wants the best for his players. He wants these guys to be better guys than they are players, and that in turn gets you a better player. And, and was that not true of other special teams coaches you had before you got here? I think a lot of other special teams, and, that, and that's credit to Coach McCarthy too, mm -hmm. just because he lets Bones be Bones, and he lets, he lets him have the confidence to do, what he do, to do what he does. And a lot of other places I've been, a lot of special teams coaches were usually at the, you know, at the tail end of the, of the mm -hmm. you know, coaching staff, and as, like, they're kind of nervous. The, you know what I'm saying? Everything they did was like, oh, I might lose my job if I do it this way. Mm -hmm. And it's like, not like that with, with, uh, with McCarthy and Bones, man. They just let each other, they, they feed off each other. It's, it's fun. So uh, when, when you got here, 20 was when you came. No, 18. No, 18 you came I in 18. 18 yeah. so, so Bones came in 20 uh, with Mike. And, um, of course, when he was with the Rams, he had this – you know, reputation of Johnny Hecker, the punter was always right. throwing. <laughs> and, and he did go a little half crazy from time to time that first year in 20 with trick plays. You were yeah. supposed to be the target of one that really <laughs> backfired in a game with Washington, right? Oh, yeah, that was bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah right? Yeah, at, yeah, that was bad. At AT&T at AT Stadium. That was, yeah, that was, uh, they were in cover two. They, yeah, they, it was a that. winnable game yeah. late in the game. And the idea was that uh, who was the receiver who was who threw the ball? He wasn't supposed to throw to me though. He was supposed to throw to somebody else. Right. Yeah. But he but he did throw it to you, and it just didn't work out. Yeah, it blew okay. up. Right. Yeah. I don't think I don't think y'all run a fake. Since then. And uh, um, the playoff game, 49ers, uh, AT and T Stadium. We kind of got. A little pushback because we, we tried to run another play after that and we had to take a delay game. But we got a first down. Okay. 49ers playoff game. But we haven't had to, if you think about it. We haven't, we haven't had. We have a fake in every week. Every week we have at least two fakes in. We just haven't had to run off. And we only punted, what, six times all, all it, season? Yes, that's true. <laughs> Do players like that stuff, though? Oh, we love it. Yeah, it, it feeds us, like, energy, uh, especially on special teams. We've got a lot of young guys on special teams. So mm -hmm. you got to keep them involved. So, you know, you always have a fake up. We may not run, probably not going to run it, but it's good that, you know, they always got to be attentive and they always got to be ready. So it, it keeps their attention. We just talked about you thinking about coaching possibly. Mm -hmm. If you had to draw up a special teams trick play, what would that look like? Throw it to CJ. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, that was too easy. That was yeah. easy. That was a easy. whole – that easy. was an entire plate of cupcakes <laughs> right there. Layup. <laughs> right yeah. there. Um, so – when you watch these special teams that you've had to just watch the last few weeks, what's jumped out at you that maybe uh, it would have been even harder to see if you were still playing it out in the middle of it? Anything? I've been watching a lot of the core. I've been watching a lot of the blocking as well. This one, uh, KR and, um, and punt return. Uh, it's just like I love our technique, and I tell, and, I, and we, we preach this every day in, in, in the um, classroom. It's like you said, it's about heart. And, and a lot of the times, you know, they're so focused on offense and defense. And these guys are young guys, so they may not even play offense or defense that day. And they, you know, sometimes they let special teams just, you know, it's just another play. 
rather than like we can change the game. So we, we've been focusing on, you know, trying to make sure they're locked in on every play just to, you know, make sure we can change the game. We, Coach McCarthy says it every week. Um, special teams make a game-changing play, uh, make a big play. So, I mean, that's what we're focused on. So the first time you saw Sam Williams line up at Gunner, crazy. crazy. what did what, what <laughs> you think? I knew he, I knew he could do it. Like he's really? too big. He's way too fast. He's way too fast to be in that body, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> he's too strong, too fast. I knew he could do it, and he's like hungry. Sam is one of the hungriest players on our team. Second round pick too. You, you, know, you rarely see somebody that hungry to, to play special team. Second round pick. He is a dog, man. He's like you can't take anything away from that dude, man. He's he's like almost unstoppable out there. You gotta you gotta put two or three guys on him to even have a chance. So what happened on the on the uh, block punt attempt <laughs> yesterday? I laughed. I don't know how he didn't get it. Hey, I laughed in his face today in the meeting. It was funny, <laughs> but no, nah, he um he just jumped. It's this is his first time really getting it. I mean, he blocked the punt, but like you don't if you're that clean and you don't really know what's going, like you you know you're just going to do whatever you can to try to make the play. Wasn't thinking the layout instead of jumping. Jumping is for kickoffs. I mean kicks. And not punch. So yeah, he just okay. Say more thing. about that. Why is that? That's a clinic for any kid okay. watching. Okay. Uh, yeah, this. yeah, yeah. So if you're blocking a field goal attempt, that goes up. So you have to go. You have to jump up to block it. And and punts, you lay out this way because it's coming off his foot low. You know what I'm saying? So that's uh, we don't even work on that though. It's because uh, Bone says it's a skill. It's a talent. It's not a well. It's a talent. It's not a skill. So people who can block kicks. That's a talent. Mm. So, um, like he blocked, he blocked one earlier this year. Yeah. Because he went low. I think he just probably, I don't know if I want to call it panic, but he wanted it so bad. He, he might have been thing. so clean, he, he so did clean. not know yeah, what to he do. He was so clean. Yeah, but, you know, it happens. Yeah. Where would you say the biggest area of growth within the special teams unit is? Our young guys, um, for sure, our young guys. Our young guys are getting better and better and better. Um, we have a lot of young guys on special teams this yeah. year too. I think we let, uh, I think we lost a lot of uh, veterans like like Luke Gifford, mm -hmm. um, people like that. So last year, um, No Brown. Mm -hmm. So, it's the young so there's guys. two of your better special teams exactly. players last exactly. year. Exactly. Exactly. And yeah. then Kelvin Joseph. Was Kelvin with, Joseph, and of then, course. And yeah. you're not there. Yeah. Exactly. So that's so like it's four all, guys. It's all young guys right now, and um, I mean, shoot, they're, they're playing well. You mm -hmm. can't. You if can't. you. If you had to say why special teams is such a catapult for a lot of guys in the NFL, why is that? Because when you first get into the league, no coach trusts young guys. <laughs> <laughs> the only way young guys, unless you're a first-round yeah. pick, unless you're just a, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You have to play special teams. Look mm -hmm. at look at DB. Yeah. Now he started out on special teams. Now he uh, broke a record in the NFL. Like everybody, if you want to play football. You have to start on the special teams, and you know if you're a dog on there, mm -hmm. you're gonna be a dog on. We say it kind of it kind of humbles you, a little bit. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Or it kind of makes you even more of a like I, I want this. Hmm. You know, yeah, I, I like I like it for anybody. How many years into your career did you embrace special teams and learn to really love it? Really love it. My so my first two years I was on practice squad. I. Was Which was a whole different deal. Whole then. different deal. Oh yeah. my goodness. Yeah, yeah. But um, I was scared to death, so I didn't even want to play on Sundays. Pit, in I Pittsburgh. Was in Pittsburgh. Yeah. I was in Pittsburgh, and then I went to Atlanta, and then my first year on the active roster, 2016, um, the coach was. I was moved. I moved to defense, and uh, he was like, "Well, the only way." Yeah, because you were a receiver. I was a receiver. Yeah, the only way you gonna make this team uh, is be a star on special teams, um, and. That's when I embraced it. Uh, I played I played DB as well, but I embraced my, my role as special teams, uh, play ace at that point. And, yeah. That was in, in, in Atlanta? In Atlanta, yeah. Dan Quinn was the head coach? Dan Quinn, yeah. And yeah. did he emphasize special teams the same? The, I mean, a lot of it is what they, as you said, Mike, Mike yeah. makes a point of he it. He makes a point of it. Honestly, uh, DQ my DQ is my guy. DQ is my guy. But he let he let um Keith Armstrong just do his thing. Um it was more of a offense defense thing. I don't know if it was emphasized. I think he embraced embraces it now a lot just because he, he sees the other side of it. But yeah, it was yeah, he sees it now. We must, when we come back, have CJ talk about uh, the Cowboys kicker and punter 
because they're both very unusual performers. And uh, we, we want to get into CJ's background. If you're not familiar with it, you need to be. And uh, we're going we're gonna to get there. Uh, CJ Goodwin, our special guest on uh, the Cowboys Hour at Sidecar Social in the <laughs> Star District in Frisco tonight. Yes, and our show is also, also brought to you by Albertsons. When it comes time to shop for tailgate favorites, go to Albertsons and Tom Thumb. Get 10% off your groceries every Dallas Cowboys game day when you wear your Cowboys jersey. Albertsons and Tom Thumb, the official supermarket and pharmacy of the Dallas Cowboys. We'll be right back. Supported by Albertson. Welcome back. We are at Sidecar Social in the Star District in Frisco. Thanks for being here. Thanks to all of you who have come out the uh, um, Victory Monday Look Ahead fan club <laughs> in the case of a game like this is here. Thank you. Thanks for being with us wherever you are. Brad Sham with Nicole Hutchison and our very special guest, Cowboys special team star C.J. Goodwin. Um, how often... Does anyone call you by your given name? Oh, never. Only, only back in West Virginia. Yeah, only back in West Virginia do they call me by my given name. And, and uh, might I guess only very few people? Only my family. Yeah, strictly my family. And how often do they call you? Uh, I think my sisters call it more than anything. They never call me CJ. They always call me Sharon. Really? Yeah. Okay. Sharon, Sharon. Jerry. 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 Yeah. Sharon Jerry. You're going to have people still in my name. No, <laughs> man. <laughs> I think that, you know, I think that. Uh, uh, I smooth, though, huh? You like that? I did. I did. <laughs> I did. Like, I just think people, I think people should, uh, should know about that. 
Uh, okay, so we, we talk about Cowboys special teams. People think about automatically about uh, the kickers. Uh, and, of course, special teams is so much more than that. But it is also that. So these two guys you got, these are unusual guys having uh, really, really good years. Let's start with the punter and the, and the consistency. Pro Bowl two years ago set the club record and a personal best for net punting, which is the most important statistic in punting, net average. And this year, he's doing better than that year. So what do you want to say about Brian Anger? Him. That's, he's him, man. He's the, he's the GOAT. Uh, that's been my guy since he came. Um, you can't. This guy is just, just the truth. And that's his testament to Bones as well. He, he finds these guys. And these, these guys, like I said, these guys really want to play for him. But, like, Banger has always been really good. He's just been in bad situations. And when he got here, he just loves this program. And yeah, he's showing what he can do so every what's year. A, what's, a, what's a bad situation for a punter? <laughs> coaching changes. You get drafted. Coaching changes happen. You, coaches may not like you. Or the GM may not like you. And not, I mean, that's it's politics yeah, and everything. Okay. Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, all right. Yeah. You know how that goes. Did you just call him Banger? Is that, his, is that I, the nickname y'all just came up with? Be Anger. I, yeah. Well, uh, no, I'm saying I thought that was like a nickname that they just tried to combine, Banger. You know? I, I honestly forgot his first name. I'm oh not going to lie to you. God. I call him Banger. Yeah. Okay. His name is Brian Anger, right? Yeah. 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 I call him Banger. We yeah. all call him Banger. I thought that was yeah. like a nickname no, that y'all came bang. up Banger. Yeah, yeah, okay. No, Banger. Yeah, everybody's everybody's cool got a nickname. nickname. Yeah, yeah, everybody's yeah, got a nickname. Yeah, I think that's pretty dope. All right. Let's talk about the young kicker. <laughs> you <laughs> you chuckle at the the very mention <laughs> of of his of his uh, presence. Because he's a rookie, we're not supposed to say anything nice about him yet, man. <laughs> oh my goodness! Not yet. No, I'm messing with man. He's come on now. When when, <laughs> when he walked in the door, that's an unusual bunch kickers. Yeah, they can be a little flighty, some of them. Yeah. When he walked in the door, nobody knew about him. You were still in camp, right? What? Well, we, like, the core special teams guys know about him. You did? Well, because of Bones. So, like, the, like the long snapper, he got, he got to give him credit, too. He's delivering the ball Yes, well. he's doing a great job, Bang, Sig. Yeah, yeah. yeah, Banger, myself, and the two special team coaches, Stu and, Stu and uh, Bones. So, Bones scouted him somehow. I don't know. He heard about him. I don't want to tell you exactly what happened. Oh, I, I mean, I know how. I mean, yeah, he, he, he knew the coaches that, uh, that Aubrey was working with. Right. That got him to the CF to the uh, um, US, USFL or XFL? USFL. USFL. Yeah. He knew those guys. He's, and he went down to Birmingham and watched him. Right. So he told us before he went, I got this guy I'm going to go see. I think he's it. I think he's the next guy. So we're like, all right, cool. Yeah. So he gets back and he was like, got him. <laughs> got him. He said it just like that, too. And then he got to camp. <laughs> Got the camp, and he was like, oh, he's kind of shaky. And he was like, man, oh, we don't really know about this guy. So he ended up winning the job. Then all of a sudden, he's the best kicker in the league. Did, did, he, did he win the job, or did they just give it to him to let him have it and grow into it? No, he won that. Yeah, he won that. Uh, yeah, there was two kickers. Yeah. I, I'm sorry, I can't remember the other I guy's name. I can't either. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm then, sorry, he, too. He won it, but we didn't see his leg power until he won the job. I think he was just, like, playing, like, <laughs> I think he was just chilling till he got the job, and then he got the job. He's like, "I'm gonna show y'all now." So yeah. So yeah. wait, what were your first initial thoughts about Brandon Aubrey? Did you think he was gonna have a season like this? No, I mean, come on I mean, now. Yeah. <laughs> this is unprecedented. Yeah. Nobody thought he was gonna do this, yeah. but yeah, he's he's so calm, man. He it doesn't seem like he. I know he cares, but he just he's so humble too. Like mm -hmm. he's, I don't think he believes what's going on either. He's just <laughs> taking it all in stride. Yeah, he's that's he's a. He's a guy, man. <laughs> yeah. have, have you ever seen? Have you ever seen a side of him practice, goofing around, meetings, whatever that that shows you a little more than what we see? There's nothing but placid. <laughs> no, he makes jokes. Yeah, he makes jokes. He does. Just among the special, just among the specialists. So I'll, I'll like they'll be playing video games or something. And I walk in and they're all joke. They're all just getting on him because he's a he's a rookie. He's, he's an old rookie, but he's a rookie nonetheless. And, yeah, we, they all just get on him, and they just, you know, they keep acting like they're going to find him. But they're such good. They're so close that it, you can't really get a real beat on him. He's, he don't have to speak too much, so he's, <laughs> he's that good. He don't have to talk. <laughs> I mean, what is it, 30, 31 in a row now? It's 
ridiculous. Yeah. Insane. So don't get if he ever misses one. Let's, oh, let's sooner not, or later let's, he's let's gonna not miss jump one. on him, please. No. Okay. Let's, sooner or later. Well, he was here a few weeks yeah. ago, and uh, he's. He's a delightful young man. He you is. Sit and talk about his story and he how'd is. you get here and and uh, but his wife came and told us during a break <laughs> that I said, "Is he like this? Is this really how?" She said, "He's all the time, yeah. and the only time she's ever seen him show uh, very much emotion is when he was drafted into the USFL because he was trying to start a kicking career." Yeah. And when he got drafted in the USFL, he knew that the door was open. And she said then he kind of jumped up and down for yeah. a minute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, he made a 60-yarder and just like, all right, cool. Yeah, I, I don't know, man. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's get into his background a little bit. Yeah, uh, for you, um, I kind of want to know, you played basketball at Bethany College. Mm -hmm. And then you went to Fairmont State. Mm -hmm. You have kind of a unique journey getting to the NFL, like a lot of guys on this team. Um, what, how would you describe your journey now that you made it here? You've been here in the NFL for about 10 seasons. A blessing. Mm. Um, it's the only way I could describe it is a blessing. Um, just having people around me that, that believed in me. Um, that's really all I can say is yeah. I have really nothing to do with it. It's just opportunities presented itself. And I went out there and I did my best. And mm -hmm. I'm here 10 years later. And a guy like Mel Blunt. Exactly. You. Yeah. you want me to go through the whole story? Uh, yeah. Oh, oh, sure. We want to hear the Mel Blunt story. You're darn right we do. I didn't know. I didn't You're know. We want to hear the whole okay. Mel Blunt story. Well, Absolutely. Say that next year. <laughs> nah, um, so my – so I was working as a <clears> – <throat> I'm sorry. I was supposed to hit the button. I'm sorry. I was working as a playground instructor. Mm -hmm. And my – I was 17, so I would have been in – 11th grade. 11th grade. 11th grade, I was working as a playground instructor. My brother, my younger brother and Mel Blunt's second oldest son played basketball together. He seen me at a basketball game that okay. they were playing in. Like AAU or? Yeah, AAU okay. team. And I was there just rooting on my brother, just chilling on my brother. And he was like, hey, you're Toddy's brother, right? I'm like, yeah. He was like, well, first, pull your pants up, <laughs> take your earrings out. <laughs> <laughs> and you address me as sir. I'm like, okay, yes, sir. Hmm. He was like, I have a job for you. I understand you're working as a playground instructor getting X amount of dollars. I'm going to pay you back then. He was like, I'm going to pay you $10 an hour to come work on the farm for me. I'm like, well, I was just making $3.75 an hour. Absolutely, yeah. I'll be up there. <laughs> so I uh, worked for him for seven years. Uh, mm -hmm. So I worked for him for 17 to 24. So through college? Through college. I had okay. a kid. I had a kid when I was 21. Yeah. So I had to, you know. And then um, went from... Bethany College played basketball for two years, transferred to Fairmont State just to be a regular student. Um, I was going to try to walk on basketball, mm -hmm. and I never really got around to it. I was having too much fun. Um, then I was playing intramural basketball against the football coaches. So my best friend in college was the best player on the football team. He was a safety named Dude McDonald. Like I give him his credit to. Hmm. But um, so he threw me a oop from half court. Boom, I dunked on a uh, – I didn't know who he was. He ended up being Is there a receipt to this still out there? I mean, we can call it. We, we can call him today. We, we can call him today. That's my guy. Yeah. His name, his name is Mike Lopez. I'll call him okay. right now. Hoping he might be watching. Yeah, but <laughs> I, I, I think Nicole is talking about something visual. Visual. Oh, it's in the middle of basketball. Of course um, not. Yeah, yeah, maybe not. Yeah, nobody's watching that. But anyway, I dunked on him. <laughs> dunked on him. Okay. And he was like, well, hey. I'm the head football coach. I'll see you at practice tomorrow. So it's spring practice. Oh. I'm like, ah, all right, cool. I'll come. But I, I weigh 170 pounds. I'm not about to play football. <laughs> so anyway, I ended up liking it. I, I was having a lot of fun because I didn't care. Like, yeah. I did, if I didn't like it, I would have just quit. And um, I ended up playing and ended up being the leading receiver on the team that year. And I got a phone call from – Somebody was like, hey, man, do you know that you can, uh, like, you're really good. Like, mm. if you play one more year, you can go to Canada oh, and wow. play football in, in the CFL. I'm like, really? Like, they'll give me $70,000 to play football? Absolutely. <laughs> and then I transferred with my buddy yeah. that I played, that he, me and him transferred together because they had a pro day at mm -hmm. the other school called uh, California University of Pennsylvania. He was really good. Yeah. So I just followed him up there. And um, we both, well, we both were on the team. But. Mm -hmm. He played a lot, and I was—I probably played probably four games. And 
<laughs> so I was just like the backup because they had yeah. other singers there that I was, I was just a transfer. So anyway, I had a pro day. I killed my pro day. Um, he ended up going to the league too. But um, so I killed my pro day, I had great numbers. I guess was getting phone calls from about 16 teams, NFL teams. I went, wow. everything's flying past me so fast. Then Mel Blunt, no, so nothing happens after the draft and all that. Mel Blunt calls the Steelers. He's like, hey man, I got this guy. You seen him at a pro day. You gotta take a chance on him. Can you give him a uh, workout? They're like, yeah, we'll get out of respect for you, yeah. man. We'll give him a workout. We know his numbers, but he never played football before. So yeah. went up there, did the workout. He was like, man, we really like you, but we can't sign you because there's no room. Yeah. Next week happened, I'm in my workout, thinking about quitting, thinking about just going to get a regular job. And um, I get a phone call. I see it on my phone, I don't answer it. It's an unknown number. I get a message. Hey, this is, I wish I would have saved that message. Hey, this is such and such scout from Pittsburgh Steelers. Uh, we're going to sign you today. How fast can you get up here? I called him back. I was like, man, I will jog up there right now. <laughs> I'm on my way, yeah, yeah. My mom, I never seen my mom cry from joy, man. That was, that was honestly one of the best moments of my life. So here are my two questions before we take our last break and take some questions from the audience. Uh, that uh, first day that you met Mel, mm -hmm. and he told you to pull your pants up and take the – how much did you know about who Mel Blunt was? Oh, I knew him. I didn't know, like, obviously I'd never seen him play, but I'm from Willing, West Virginia, and – that Pittsburgh Steelers that, is the right. team, and I, I was always a Cowboys fan, by the way. But the Pittsburgh Steelers were – no, seriously. Okay. Yeah, but um, yeah, I'm living a dream right now. It's crazy. <laughs> but um, the Pittsburgh Steelers are the team, so everybody knew who he was. And his kids actually went – his oldest son went to school with – at my school, I went to a private school called Lindsley. So his, mm -hmm. his son was a few years younger than me. So I knew who he was, but I never really had a conversation with him until that day. And wow. my second question is, in the gym that day when you're dunking over the – Coach, um, if we uh, freeze frame that and offer you a chance to have an NBA career or an NFL career, which one are you taking? It's easy. Seriously? I will be with the Lakers in the heart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but what if your choice is the Hornets? I would be with the Hornets in the heart. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. No, I'm just I'm living a dream. Yeah, no, just, just so that we, uh, just so we uh, define our terms, C.J. Goodwin is our very special guest tonight and yes our show is also brought to you by papa john's it's big it's good and it's only for cowboys fans the cowboys special from the cowboys and papa john's a large one topping pizza for only 9.99 order today better ingredients better pizza papa john's mm -hmm. the official pizza of the dallas cowboys we'll be right back with cj goodwin
to the Miller Lite Cowboys Hour, supported by Albertson. At Sidecar Social uh, in the Star District in Frisco, a few more minutes with our special guest C.J. Goodwin, Brad Sham, and Nicole Hutchison. Before I forget, next Monday is what? Christmas. Thank you. <laughs> no show on Christmas. Some things are more important than football. Christmas would be one of those things. The next week is what? New Year's. No show on <laughs> New Year's because somebody's got to watch the Texas game. So, uh, yeah, no, there's it just there's no way uh, to, on, a, on a big holiday. But we'll be back here on January 8th at uh, Sidecar Social. Okay, a few questions from the audience for C.J. Goodwin. Good evening, C.J. My name is Rambo. Uh, Rambo. So I know we're going to bounce back. Everything's going to be great. So you were talking about basketball earlier. You're talking about the Lakers. Do you not watch the Mavs on your days off? Yeah, I, went, I actually went to the Mavs game against the Lakers. But <laughs> so did you go to the Mavs game or the Lakers game? I went to Le LeBron game. Yeah, That's okay. where I went. All yeah. right. I, do, I do like the Mavs, though. I, yeah, I, I like Luka. You're right. I'm sorry. Yeah, I do like Luka, everybody. I love Luka. <laughs> Hey, CJ, Larry from McKinney. You started a foundation on behalf of your dad. It was beautiful. I'm just curious, is it pronounced PEGA or P-E-G-A? PEGA. Man, I appreciate that, too. You bringing that up. Yes, we yes. should have plugged that in, too, man. Here yeah. we are. No, Here we are. <laughs> what do you mean we should have? Talk about it. What are we oh, doing okay. now? You are the plug. Okay, yeah, man. <laughs> what, are we, what are we doing? PEGA Foundation. I, so. I wanted to get a shirt, but I looked up the shop, and it's, it's not available. Yeah, so we're going through some changes with the... Uh, the uh, what's it called? The website right now. Yes. Um, we're getting a, we have a whole new web developer and all that. But um, yeah, I got you. But yeah, it's called it's pronounced Pega. It's short for Perry Galloway. Right. Um, yeah, yeah. Appreciate that, man. Thank you. So Good tell job. us about it. What's the foundation all about? Uh, it's mentorship. Uh, my dad was a real big community leader in my area. It's uh, mentorship through experience. So um, learning through experience. So we want to take the kids out and show them you know different ways of life. Um, we're putting a couple kids through the same private school I went through right now. Um, we do holiday giveaways. We do a big camp every year in Wooding, West Virginia. Um, everything centered back in back in Wooding. We do all we can in the Dallas area too. But um, I'm from one of the I'm from the poor state in the nation. Mm -hmm. So you know, I, I, if anybody makes it out, you know, they got to give back. Uh, uh, yeah. That mentorship is a recurring theme in your life. Yes. Right. Yes. Very I, much. So. I mean, and and some of it is on really critical, mm -hmm. fundamental. Uh, grounds like that, and some of it is the, what you do with young players. Mentorship is what you do. I appreciate that. I mean, I've been blessed with great mentors, like you said, in my life. So it's, it's only it's only right to give back. Why is it so important for you to give back? This is because it's embedded in me, yeah. um, from my dad to my coaches. Now, um, everybody in my life has been a mentor. You know, you mm -hmm. take what you can from from different people, and um, uh, it, you surround yourself with with people that that want to see you do well. Um, and I want to see my people that I. I'm surrounded by the world as well. When did you uh, first realize, I don't know of anybody who originally sets out to be a mentor, who turns out to be a mentor. And sometimes your mentors are people who, that, that's not what they were trying to do. Right. But they taught you. Right. When, did you when did you realize that was something that you could do to really help fulfill your life? Uh, Honestly, early on, uh, like when I worked for Mel Blount, I just wasn't working on the on the farm. I only worked on the farm for a year, but I was working with the youth, um, the youth boys up there. It was a boys' home, a uh, Mel Blount youth home. Uh, these boys were placed there um, by the by the government, by the state, um, because they were in bad situations. So I was up at up there as a as a youth counselor every day, and um, just seeing how those how those guys looked at me um, for for inspiration or for mentorship. Um, it really changed my life, honestly, and that what led me to be a mentor. Now it's crazy to think that I'm closer to, I was closer to those guys' age than I am to the guys that are on my team now. But yeah, it's 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 honestly a blessing to be in this position. What's been the most challenging thing about mentoring the younger guys on this team, if there has been anything challenging at all? Uh, I mean, you're dealing with, you know, professional athletes. Yeah. Everybody has been the man at some point in their, in their career, either college or yeah. coming in there from, from And now they got some money. Exactly. <laughs> and now they have money to, to back up whatever they thought they yeah. were at somewhere else. So mm -hmm. uh, that's a challenge. But being in the game so long, 
And I mean, I've been productive, pretty productive over my career, and I have a, I have a lot of respect in the locker room. I don't know why they respect me so much. I really don't. Yes, <laughs> you know yes, why. You. <laughs> no, I'm messing with you. But having having a lot of respect in the locker room, man. Um, these guys, you know, these are good guys. We, we have. I don't know what they're doing upstairs. That's why I want to be up there too, because whatever they're doing upstairs is working, man. They have good guys here. It's it's really a blessing to be around. Character us. counts. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah they look at that character a lot, man. I've just been in that meeting with them. I see, I see them really looking at character. It's it's nice to see. Uh, future coach and general manager, but current <laughs> player, rehabbing that torn pack. C.J. Goodwin. Thank you very much for Appreciate being with us. Thanks, thanks, thanks to thanks, C.J. Thanks, thanks to all of you for coming with us. Uh, We'll say Merry Christmas because we won't see you here at Sidecar Social uh, before Christmas. And then we'll let you have New Year's off and we'll see you back here on January 8th on the Cowboys Hour. This has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah!